to receive a payment now for that particular invoice. So again, I'm going to go ahead and choose my customer. Uh, there's the invoice that we just created. I'm going to select it. Uh, make sure that there's um, the amount that I want to charge is, is put in. Uh, it should pop up automatically. I'm going to choose some form of credit card payment. And we're just going to come down here and we're going to hit the save and close button to uh, access the company information and it's going to load up a payment window automatically uh, right within QuickBooks. We developed a technology called PayGuard. It's a form of tokenization. So let me kind of just briefly explain how this works. What I'm highlighting right here, this is actually what we um, would call a PayGuard code. It's a non-sensitive piece of data. And what I mean by that is there's no underlying sensitive credit card data. So unlike encryption, if a hacker got a hold of this or um, you know, a, a new employee who turned out to be a bad apple wrote this down and tried to use it to go run a charge, they're not going to be able to do anything with it uh, because, again, there is no underlying credit card data. The way that you read PayGuard codes is very simple. You just look at the last four characters. So the letter uh, indicates the card type, V for Visa, ending in 111. This is a MasterCard ending in 881. So on the, uh, the payment form itself, our software is actually going to show the last PayGuard account that was used. Uh, again, in this case, a Visa ending in 111. Now here's an interesting uh, advantage that we also offer versus QuickBooks. So I'm going to jump back here, and we're going to take a look at the payments, payment settings tab. So here with QuickBooks, uh, you'll notice that they store one payment account per customer. Most merchants, uh, their customers tend, uh, in a lot of cases, to switch payment accounts or want to add extra payment accounts uh, and, and unfortunately with the way that QuickBooks is structured with their credit card service when you do that it actually wipes out the previous credit card account information so the merchant would have to you know manually switch and, and let's say they got a MasterCard now they'd have to put the data in manually and when they do so it's gonna overwrite this so they're always limited to, to one payment account they're also uh, having you know the exposure of having to keep entering in credit card data. What our software does uh, is it supports multiple payment accounts. So again, the last account used here was a Visa ending in 111, but if we don't want to use that, we can just click on the secure PayGuard icon and we can actually have a list of up to 10 different payment accounts to choose from. Another thing that, that we do that's uh, also unique, and let me try and jump back here to Danny one more time, even though the expiration date is stored in QuickBooks, there is no uh, notification in advance uh, when you go to run a, a credit card charge in the desktop version. So what that means to the merchant is they're going to have to literally submit a transaction uh, and get the decline, and of course that causes them to incur some basic processing fees. We have a way that we think will, will help the merchant um, save some money. Uh, you'll notice that there are some different colors here. We actually do an automatic expiration date check on our PayGuard code, and then we color code um, that PayGuard code. And basically, the, uh, the color coding works just like a stoplight. Green is good, yellow is good, but it's going to expire in 60 days, and of course red is bad. That's an expired account you don't want to use. We're going to go ahead and process with PayGuard. You'll notice that all the fields gray out, and then we're going to hit the charge button. And so what's going to happen at this point is you're going to uh, be prompted for um, a PIN number. It's just like when you go to the bank. Uh, if you want to use the ATM, you've got to put in your personal PIN number. So it's a second tier of security to, pre you know, to help prevent somebody from hijacking uh, another person's credentials or running unauthorized charges. The other thing that happens is uh, this links each particular user to a particular transaction, and we can produce um, security reports that show you know, who ran this transaction, when they ran it, the account that was used, things like that. You'll see that the results show up in real time. Green is good. That means that we're approved. We do have an option. You'll see that there's a checkbox right down here at the bottom. You can check this uh, before you hit the charge button. And if the charge goes through, our software will automatically email a summary receipt that will show name, date, amount, invoice number, and uh, off code. We also have the ability to support swipe transactions. Now, you'll see clearly on this machine there's a big red X over the, the card reader. I don't have one plugged in here. If I did, this big red X would change to a big green check mark to show that you know there's there's a compatible card reader connected. So we we got the um, we got the approval um, inside um, the payment processing window. So let's go look at QuickBooks now. You'll see that the invoice has been correctly updated automatically, and then you'll also um, 
see that we've created a payment receipt within QuickBooks. We've actually placed the PayGuard code right here uh, in the reference number field. We, the reason we do that is um, a lot of times you'll get uh, the merchant's client will call up and say, hey, you know, I know this invoice 3221, but what account did you use? And the merchant can say, well, it was a visa ending in 111, again, without having to handle um, sensitive payment data.